You're listening to the Digital Data Cafe podcast, where we talk about everything data driven in your world. Join us each week to hear from the world's top business and industry leaders on why using data in a digital world matters. Here's your host, Albert Thompson. Good afternoon. Thank you again. This is another episode of the Digital Data Cafe. I am your host, CEO of Driven IQ, Albert Thompson. I'm with the founder and CEO, Colin Davis from Cartender. Colin, what's going on? What's up, Albert? How are you, man? Thanks for having oh, me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, you know, I, I missed the last digital dealer. I apologize. We got slammed by some crazy hurricane, Ian. <laughs> um, so I couldn't nope. make it. But, but how was it? Uh, it was great. I actually didn't personally get to go, but our co-founder, George Kennedy, went. He said attendance was awesome, like really a lot more people than in a previous show. Uh, everyone was talking about everything between inventory levels to even like EVs and how our infrastructure is going to be set up to support that. So uh, a lot of really cool conversations going on and people are still you know, just more excited than ever about what's to come for our industry because we're kind of still coming out of that lull, right? Inventories are starting to come back. So I think it's an exciting time heading into 2023. Yeah, it's a, a lot of changes in the automotive industry. There's no doubt about it uh, from electrification, um, dealer consolidation, uh, inflation. There's just a lot of narratives going on in the industry. Um, but what's really exciting is um, for those listening today, um, and what really excites me and um, and I and I get pumped about it, right? Is is video, right? Content, you know, we are moving into um, as in my opinion, consumers really being, you know, into video consumption, right? We're consuming video more and more. Um, it's the way that we're engaging with media, um, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, what are your thoughts? I mean, where are we at today with video? And, and for those that are listening, um, share a little bit about your background and, and who you are and what's car tender. Sure. I mean, to the first point, video is absolutely everywhere. I mean, if you look at how any consumer ingests content today, we all wake up, we're probably scrolling on our phones, looking at Instagram Reels or TikToks, or we're watching YouTube. Uh, My father, who's in his 70s, he is a YouTube maniac. He loves consuming and watching and kind of going down the rabbit hole with all the different kind of content that's available to him. So Uh, Some have even said YouTube is replacing education in certain ways, right? Like you can learn so much from a YouTube video. Um, So I think video is everywhere. It's not going anywhere. As far as it pertains to automotive, we're still at the end of this educational phase. So I've been talking about video for over 10 years. um, And it's one of those things where people understand they need to do it. It's just really complicated and hard to understand where they should start, so that's kind of what car tenders built to do. We're kind of that video solution that can help you with strategy, help you make the first step and really help you execute on it as well. Um, as far as my story, personally, my family got started in the car business back in the 1930s. So really? the Davis Brothers Garage, yeah, Davis Brothers wow. Garage was in Windsor, Vermont. And um, on our website, we actually have this old photo of an old car getting driven around town and it was painted as a moving billboard. So I like to say that that's kind of where we started with advertising and using motion to communicate a message. Now we've kind of turned into car tender and we've got video to do that. But my, my family was in the business for a while. My grandfather sold the business right before the oil embargo and then um, basically kind of went through generations. And then I graduated college and I got started as a video editor and a web developer uh, for an automotive video production company. I moved up the ranks, did that for about 10 years, and then went out on my own in 2017, Car Tender was born. And wow. so Car Tender is kind of coming from this idea of, okay, we've all got experience in automotive, we're car guys, we're tech guys, and we're video guys. And that's really a big differentiator. We're not just this video technology company, we understand video production. And I think the context of why you create video to help you sell cars is lost on a lot of these technologies that are out there. So we aim to really help uh, bring that to the table as part of our expertise to help you do video better. Yeah, that's, um, man, what a great story. I didn't know um, about the Davis Brothers from the 1930s and, and generationally, yeah. man, that's so cool, right? From the 30s being the first motion um, you know, automotive advertising, um, yeah, super yeah. neat. to your point though. Right. Um, I agree with you that a lot of times from a video production standpoint, that production piece 
tends to get lost. Um, speak yes. to that a little bit. And, and I think it's specifically in the automotive industry, right? From a dealer perspective, or if you're an agency, um, why is that component so important when you're putting together that, that creative message? Well, because you don't want to just throw something against the wall and, and just see what happens. I mean, that's okay if you're experimenting with new ideas, but you have to be really intentional about what you're doing. We know video is the most effective medium to communicate a message. So in using that as like our mission statement, right? If we know video is the best way to communicate something and how do we do that for cars? Well, let's go back to like, what does the buyer want? What are they interested in? Um, and we also take the approach of looking at what the dealer wants because they're the client, right? So mm -hmm. what, we're, what we often found in the beginning of our early days producing video was a lot of folks didn't want something that was kind of cookie cutter. They wanted personalization. And we know there's so much data out there. I, mm -hmm. I love to say that you know content is king, but it's not true. Data is king. Content is the hand. And that's a Game of Thrones reference if anyone knows what the hand is. But essentially, mm -hmm. the data is everything. The content really helps facilitate and use that data to create the right message, to do the right targeting. As in the case of Driven IQ, you guys know what data is about. You understand its usefulness from a targeting perspective. We can use that same data to personalize video, personalize messaging. And I think that we should. And those two go hand in hand. So what's hard about video production is understanding who you're trying to present to and then understanding, okay, what's my message going to be? And then how do I turn that into a video? Video production is hard, it's time consuming, and it can be really expensive. So we wanted to kind of commoditize that a little bit and bring efficiencies to that process. And that's what we're doing with all of our traditional video production experience and with our technology that'll help you create better video faster. Yeah, that's uh, that's phenomenal. And um, yeah, you are definitely speaking to our heart when it comes to data. Um, and, and I've always said this, Colin, um, there's no questions, right? Um, we are absolutely moving um, further and further into a market where uh, it's about people-based marketing. It's personalizing that message. It's one-to-one -one relationship with the consumer, whether that's from a, from a data privacy standpoint or from a, a connection to that consumer and understanding that 360-degree contextual um, perspective of, of that persona, right? It is so important and critically um, challenging for us as businesses and, and especially in the, in the retail industry to say, hey, I need to know more than the, the fact that this person is just looking for a car. I need to know more about that customer. And our customers today, especially post-COVID, um, expect that from us. Um, you know, what do you say to that, you know, in terms of how you're building your technology? Yeah, I mean, it's there's two different conversations happening when it comes to content personalization. One is you don't want to be too scary about it. You don't want to say, hey, Albert, I noticed that you're wearing pants today and you know the weather's <laughs> this or what. I, I think it's cool that we can do that, but we want to be right. careful. We don't want to scare people. So um, if you have a general idea of what their interests are, I think you can still create a message that resonates with a group of people. And I think you see that happening with Google's idea behind flocks. And right. I know this has gone back and forth, right? We talk about no cookies. Well, okay, we got to be able to target somehow. We may be painting in broader strokes. So the message can still resonate with a group of people. The thing I love about cars is how emotional that experience is. It's the second biggest purchase, the first being your house. So it's very emotional. And what a better way to communicate and evoke emotion than through video to tell a story, right? You don't even necessarily have to say, this is the car and this is how much it is. Maybe you can just tell the story about why that car is important to you. Uh, one of my favorite stories regarding uh, my family and our history in the dealership is that about five years ago, my dad got an email from a guy who said, hey, um, are you the Davis brothers? And he said, yeah, that was my father's dealership. And he said, well, I just bought a 1969 Camaro on consignment in Las Vegas. And I have the original title work and it shows that it was sold that year from your, from your father's store. And like to create that connection and then to see pictures of that car, that tells a story. And there's multiple stories there. But the idea is that a car is such an emotional purchase that you want to cater to that and using video to do it is important. Um, you made a point about COVID and how, you know, our buying behavior has changed because of that. We're kind of more in-house um, or we're at home kind of shopping online. Of course, video is a very important tool to help communicate things that you are no longer doing in person. So 
I, it's always played an important part from a research perspective to kind of making that final decision to buy. And I think video is the most effective strategy for brand awareness. Even if you're low on inventory and if you don't have a specific offer or a car to sell, you should be talking about your story. You should be branding who you are, what you do, and why it's important to come buy from you. Um, a lot of dealers talk about how involved in their community are. I think 100% that needs to be pushed. I think more and more people need to understand you're not just buying from a car dealer. You're you're buying from a community advocate and leader and contributor. So it's all about story. It's all about finding different ways to get your story out there. And video is the best way to do that. 100%. And you know, um, it's, it's interesting that you talked about um, the um, research, right? And, and how we are now different in the way that we um, buy as consumers, right? So, you know, post COVID, pre COVID, right? It was, it was common for us to say, hey, Colin, uh, I'm going to get my, my wife or my spouse or my loved one. We're going to go do the Sunday drive down the dealer roll, right? And then we're going to go store to store to store and just, you know, look around. Um, and you made a point earlier about your father, right? Consuming and going down the rabbit hole on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And then you really bring it all together. And now post COVID, we do all of our research. I mean, you know, studies are showing we're doing all of our research online. And so it's part of that buying journey, which means that you have multiple engagement points of, of consumers coming to your website, um, looking at that inventory. But then there's also a very big opportunity where they leave because they're still in the research phase. They, they're going to be consuming video. They might go to YouTube to consume more video about that vehicle, look at the interior vi vi you know, videos. Um, and to your point, uh, generationally speaking, I think that that's compressing, right? We're not, no longer can the 70 year old not do this, right? Right. Um, There's so an expectation. Yeah. There's a huge expectation from my generation, from generations below me, um, you know, and some above. Like we're all consumed by content, you know, we're all, you know, watching our streaming services, we're on our phones. And again, it is the most effective way to communicate something. Unfortunately, attention spans are just getting shorter and shorter. So one of the most popular formats of video we're doing is six seconds. It's and even 15 seconds has almost become too long. It's all about six yeah. second content. And TikTok has kind of perpetuated that, you yeah. know, ethically, morally, I could say like, that's probably bad for society, but I can tell you that that is the best way to get in front of these people. That's the time frame you're working with, and you always need to be switching it up. So I can create a video, but in 30 days, I'm probably going to need to do something different. Because again, you want to stay top of mind. You always want to be unique and different from the next guy. So you're always needing a way to kind of produce more content um, as and as quickly as possible. Speed to market is another huge part of this. So something else that we really focus on as part of what our technology enables uh, automotive retailers to do. Yeah, I think this is a good opportunity for us to talk about that, right? So, um, you know, I, I speak to many dealers and they're always like, you know, well, how can I really utilize TikTok effectively? Or how can I spend my ad dollars effectively, um, you know, on YouTube versus TikTok? So um, talk to me a little bit about that. So what do you think about, you know, how you can use TikTok effectively, you know, versus YouTube or Facebook, et cetera? Yeah. So, I mean, Google's looking at TikTok as like, okay, people are going to TikTok to search, right? This is a... This is a competitor to us now. And it's fascinating to me that people are going to TikTok because they want to know about something, right? YouTube is kind of your go-to for how-to content. Uh, mm -hmm. We also know it's a huge part of the buying process for cars because that's where you're doing a lot of your research, you're watching reviews, you're kind of considering different models. TikTok is the latest emerging platform because they've done such a good job of recommending like um, you know, content that you're going to enjoy or that you're going to really resonate with you. So you can sit there and scroll and it's just endless, right? It never ends. The show never ends. So I think from a dealer's perspective, if you're trying to execute on TikTok, a best practice is organic, make it authentic, you know, use the app for editing and graphics and things like that, because TikTok is promoting that. They want more of that. And that feeds the algorithm to get you seen more by more people. I think from an advertising standpoint, TikTok is a great platform for cheap impressions. So you can definitely create a spot, run it on TikTok, get in front of a lot of people, do your traditional targeting, you know, in terms of like your demographics, your area, so on and so forth. Um, but it's short form. So you <laughs> yeah. might have 12 different six second spots that you're kind of running out there, optimizing and testing, but it is a really great opportunity for like a brand awareness play and getting in front of people. Um, as far as YouTube, 
Longer form content performs really well. Again, people are there researching shopping, great opportunity to get in front of them, maybe when they're high or mid funnel. Uh, and then Facebook is a huge win in terms of any kind of advertising you're doing because they know their audience really well. Mm -hmm. And I think the targeting capability and the affordability to run ads there is, is a no brainer. Gotcha. You know, so let me ask you this, right? Because for the audience out there that's listening, right? Um, some of this can sound daunting, right? So I always like to remember we have to, and it's funny, right? We always have to think about this could be watched on video, right? So we're talking yep. about video being watched on video. We have to remember that audience. Right. So right. as the audience is listening to this today, um, and this could be, you know, a fixed ops director. And he's thinking, you know, Colin, this sounds great, man. But geez, how do I even begin doing this? I mean, how can I use this and create a content strategy for my department? Talk to me about that. I mean, how can we utilize sure. this in different departments of the dealership, especially when inventory is challenged? Yeah. So a big part of what we talk about is how every department of a dealership is a marketer. Um, you know, we know departments are kind of businesses within the business. So our whole approach is to address every department with different types of video content that they can create. Uh, we have this platform, it's called the Video Publisher, and people can actually go in, dealers, agencies, whoever the end user is, they can go in and choose from a menu of different templates and different video styles for every type of department. That's new car, used car, service, fixed ops. You can even do videos on like testimonials of your customers. Um, you can do process-based ads. So you can talk about you know your process when you come in for a service appointment. We kind of cover every part of the dealership and we're always adding to it because there's always different things people are doing at the store and they want to be able to communicate and demonstrate on that. So it's all important. Like you just said, with inventory, you know, being low, now we are coming back a little bit, but with it being yep. low, fixed ops is really important. So we need to focus on, you know, the service options that are available, what that process looks like, maybe some deals that you're offering, right? Even if it has to do with your experience in the service waiting area, hey, you can come and work here and have some free coffee and wait for your car, right? Maybe they have a guarantee they want to promote. I think all of that is really important and you need to make use of every piece of content that's available to you that we offer for you to kind of promote that part of the dealership. And then think about how you use it. You got to be sending it to them in your email blast. You should be putting in your email cadences, put it on YouTube, put it on social, put some ad dollars behind it, right? Make a campaign out of it. There's so many different ways to use it. I think that's really important as well. Yeah. So for those listening, um, you know, do I need a production team? I mean, if I wanted to use the car tender video publisher, right? I mean, what do I need to get started? I mean, you said there's videos on there. So is there templates that a, that a dealer can use? I mean, how would I go about yeah. you know, even creating a video? Yeah, I think what's really unique about our offering is that we kind of do the first steps for you. You log in, you get to watch a bunch of training videos on where to start, how to create different videos. And then it's really up to you to experiment. We make it really easy for you to test and try different things. Um, one, something that's really unique about what we do too is that we've got all this footage of cars that we're filming. We make that available to you to use and create your own videos. So nothing is kind of a walled garden here, right? When you talk about like, oh, I don't want to have to film footage. Well, we got you covered on that, right? A lot of the templates have, you know, some stock footage elements, or we can even allow you to upload your own footage. So maybe you've already got a drone shot of your dealership or some kind of interior shot of the showroom. We can incorporate that into the videos within the system, uh, within the video publisher. So we give you a lot of flexibility to personalize and customize your video without making it too laborious in terms of time to create that actual video. So oftentimes I like to tell people, you know, it's going to take you less than a minute to actually go through the process. And then the system creates that video in a few minutes. So you could be spending, you know, four hours doing one edit and this system's going to do it in less than four minutes. It's pretty impressive. That's it. It's incredible. It's, it's absolutely, I mean, I mean, Colin, um, I, I definitely am going to hype it up because it's phenomenal. Um, and you should be super proud Thank of you. it because it's, it's incredible. But I mean, for those out there listening, I mean, to, to think about something that could take hours um, and in some cases, days or weeks that could be compressed into a matter of minutes mm -hmm. so that I can get something effectively to market. I mean, especially when speed to market you mentioned earlier is, is yeah. a critical component. The biggest problems that you guys are solving at Car Tender from a video perspective um, are hands down. So what other um, elements of the Car Tender platform um, do you think it's important for the audience to know about that really yeah. makes your unique offering? What's, what's really unique about it is we understand video production, right? Our DNA 
is in video production of cars. That's what our leadership's been doing for over 30 years combined. We understand what it is to film a car. So it's lighting, it's angles, it's showing the car driving, not just sitting there. I think walk-arounds are great, but the car's parked, like, you know, you're missing something. So we understand video production. We couple that with our technology. We know how the tech can help you create better video content. So you're literally getting kind of like this video expertise bundled in with the technology for you to do it. Um, we also make available all of that running footage of the car. So you're going to have clips of everything driving down the road, right? We're covering every make and model. You're going to be able to create an ad for any kind of vehicle on your lot. We can even use your actual imagery. You can give us inventory data feeds. We can create videos from that, right? Those can be short form. They can be long form. No matter what you envision from a creative standpoint, our system can adapt and actually program it to be able to create that video for you. And then you can create as many versions as you want. What's also really important is when you talk about the intention or the context and the purpose of the video, think about the platform you're trying to run that video on. Is it for YouTube and OTT? Then you want to create an HD video that's 30 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. If you're doing TikTok or Instagram reels, you want to create a vertical version of it. If you want to do Instagram or carousel uh, related ads on Facebook, you want to use Square. Right. So everything we do understands what the platforms are. We have all the different formats. We have all the different sizes and durations. So kind of everything is covered. You don't have to think about that. We literally provide all of that to you out of the box. And I think what's really great is you yourself can go in and create these videos if you'd like, or you can just have us do it. So we kind of give you both options. When you're signing up, you're getting our awesome support or you're, you know, so we kind of become your in-house video team, or you can just do it yourself and have fun and ask questions along the way. So I just think it's a really simple tool. It's really powerful. And some of our dealers are creating hundreds of videos a month and they're literally spending like one day a week doing that. Right. It, it's amazing to see how much output they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, especially when we talk about the future, um, of the industry and all the challenges that we were talking about, you know, the electrification, um, you know, of the industry, but one of the things that, that I've been hearing more and more, right. Is in-housing, right. And, you know, the decision to in-house, uh, for, for a long time, it's always been, you know, I'm going to outsource this part of my business. I'm going to outsource my marketing. I'm going to outsource my video creation. I'm going to outsource, you know, um, you know, my everything. So now we're in a situation where, Tools like yours can bring that into an in-house perspective. And you're also offering the service ability to manage that. So you got the managed side of the business. Um, you know, speak to us a little bit about the future. I mean, and, and tell us why you think that, you know, in-housing is important, especially when it does come to offering video creation. I just think when you in-house, you have the best chance for authenticity. If you're filming your customers saying how great the experience was, if you're filming your team, those are the people your customers are going to see. They want to meet the guy on camera, right? They right. don't want to necessarily see the random spokesperson on, on there. They know that that person's not going to be the person they see in person. So the idea is that authenticity is key. Um, when you in-house, you provide a single resource. It doesn't have to be a huge team, just one person. Even if it's an added task to an existing person's role, the idea is like, just get them to film that one testimonial, upload it to the Cartender platform. We do the rest. We edit it, we put the graphics on, and then we put it to YouTube or Facebook for you. Um, the idea of in-housing is also important because there's so many different things you can document that change on a regular basis that there's no way you could afford to keep sending a video team there to do it. So it's really about the efficiency of, of creating a process around capturing video and not having to spend an arm and a leg doing it. You know, just keep recording content, keep putting it through our system, keep posting it out there. It's going to do really well. And I just think that, again, when you see someone on camera from the store, it's going to resonate better with your audience. There's no doubt about how much more authentic that is. And I said earlier that TikTok really kind of favors that. The algorithm wants to see that. And we've seen some like amazing content dealers are already doing. It's it's original, it's fun, you know, whether they're capitalizing on like trends or doing dances, but you just see a lot of fun content and people buy into that. They want to have fun and enjoy that experience too. That, it, it, you you couldn't say it better. And I, and, and listen, when I call when I think about in-housing, I call it, you know, um creative agility. We have to have creative agility, meaning that, you know, to your point, especially when it's the short form, it's the testimonial, it's the, 
the instant personalized video that you're going to put onto TikTok. Um, you need as a business owner to have that agility and speed to market, right? To own that creative content. And moreover, yes. right, you have to own that narrative. And who's going to, who's going to present the best narrative of your business than yourself? You are. That's right. right. Yes, That's right. you are. And, yeah. It, right. You know, it's funny too. A lot of folks are like, well, I'm camera shy. It's like, okay, don't look at the camera. Don't put it in their face like that. Put it off to the side and get them to make eye contact with you and have a conversation. It'll naturally relieve kind of that stress. They'll forget the camera's even there. And it takes practice. You might not be great at it on the first try, but the more you keep doing it, you're going to get better. You're going to be natural about it. It's just like a musician. A musician doesn't get better because they make the song and then that's it. They record it. They listen to it thousands of times. They right. refine it. And then before you know it, they're making hits and they're performing and everything's great. So you have to kind of work at that craft a little bit. But once you start shooting, I think it comes naturally to people. And certain people would be more camera centric than others. Just capture as much as the vibe of the vibe as you can, because that is exactly what people want right? They want to kind of trust, build trust with you. You're building trust with them. It, it all works. Um, yeah. I was going to make one more point, And that was that, you know, when you're using a tool like ours, it's not replacing a video production company. It's not replacing an agency. It is there to kind of assist in those times of, okay, we just need something that we can plug in and kind of spit out really quickly. I think it's still really important to work with video production companies who have a specific approach and tell a story, right? There's something to be said about that type of quality, but you know, we are really seen as like a video partner. That's that in-house team, even though we're out of house, we're there for you to kind of help you create content. And then once you kind of adapt to that process with our system, it kind of becomes this kind of set and forget, really easy to use. And, you know, it, it makes it easy, right? It yeah, allows you to kind of continue doing your job. I, I couldn't agree more. And um, yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, listen, there is absolutely something to be said about there's a place and a niche for that high quality video production crew that you need, right? To get that custom message, you know, whether it's the specific, you know, the December to remember, you know, or something to that effect. And yep. and and then the ability to literally have the speed and agility to to build that video content um on demand. And then also, I mean, you know, speak to some of the API technology that you guys have as well, right? Because there might yep. be an OEM or um, a brand that's listening right now, um, an agency um, with a lot of volume, right? So what are some of those um, technological nuances that you have available to them to help really, like you said, personalize or bring in some of that data components? Yeah. So I'm a big believer in when we build a solution. And when I say solution, I mean, this is a front end tool that is the video publisher or our player. You can use this on your website. It's ready to go. But every time we build a solution, we also build an API behind it. And in fact, we start with the API before we even start with the solution. Hmm. And the reason why we do that is because we know that there are partners out there who want to be able to kind of build a hybrid. They may want to use the publisher, but then they need API access so that their developers can programmatically access that content or, you know, upload it somewhere, whatever it is that they have a process of doing, they want to plug into their own tools. That's why the API exists. So we've also found that a lot of folks can build some really great stuff on top of our API that we never even imagined or didn't have a need for, but their clients do. So it really enables more creative agility at these agencies who already have a process and a way they do things. Our system is just there to kind of be the engine to help empower that process that they already have. So for example, Driven IQ can generate a thousand videos based on billions of data points because they know that they're going to personalize the content for a specific set of people that they're targeting. And the messaging can match that. So, you know, oftentimes our most common pieces of content are new car specials or used car specials. We've got all this inventory data. We know the price. We know the photos. We know everything about the car that we need, uh, incentives included. We can generate that content. And that's where creative agility makes the most sense. Speed to market, right? Your specials yep. come out. You need your videos up and out and out there in front of your audience as soon as possible. Our platform allows you to do that. Traditional methods, you're going to wait a few days, maybe even a week before you're going to get that back. So again, time costs money, all things that have to be considered, depending on how quickly you need to get that content out there. So if you're an OEM, you know, we can create tier one quality content. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of that in terms of when we think about the type of model specific content we want to create for our 
uh, for our dealer clients or even for agencies. So mm-hmm. we can be leaned on as this video production house that can do that higher quality content and automate and create multiple versions of it, depending on the dealership's region or locality that that content's for. We've done a lot of content like that before for a lot of OEMs, where we basically regionalize the content, even though the overall incentive is the same. But yeah, back to agencies, ad tech companies, you know, if you guys want to have a personalized custom video experience that matches your existing process or somewhere in your application, uh, our render API is the tool that can do that for you. And it's extremely powerful, highly scalable, and really you can create anything with it. You know, I got to tell you, um, I think the biggest takeaway from this whole entire conversation, and um, hopefully you'll agree, but, you know, uh, creative agility. I think Love it. that's... Dude, that's the word, right? Creative agility. Yeah. Cartender brings creative agility and, and and speed and efficiency and scalability to video uh, production and, and content creation. So, um, Colin, I'll leave you with this because I do it for every single episode. Um, so if somebody wanted to get a hold of Cartender today and they wanted to get signed up and they're ready to go, man, they're ready to start making some TikToks today and get on camera. Yep. How do they do it? They go to cartender.com. All right. All right. Contact the, us. the rest is the rest is easy. You click get started. You can schedule a demo with us. You can get on a call with Rick. You can get on a call with George, myself. Any of the guys will jump on with you. We'll kind of give you our mission statement about why video is important. And if you already know that's important, you're ready to kind of jump in. Then we'll jump right into a demo for you and give you a full look at the platform. But just go to cartender.com uh, and you can reach us there and learn all about us. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, Colin, thank you so much. Let's hopefully some of these guys bring some creative agility to their dealerships or their agency. And uh, thank you for uh, coming on board. Yeah, man. Thanks, Albert. Take care.